welcome back to Taylor Tales. We are now heading to James Route Chapter 9. Hopefully we get something something going on. Come on. <laughs> James might be at the bottom tier uh, rank-wise right now based on store progression. When, when I've been picked up by another server, I'm dressed in the traditional garb. My outfit resembles that of Lena, though it seems more sparkly. The long skirt I'm wearing doesn't seem to have, many, have any pockets, so I just sew my cell phone right into it. I don't want to lose it, even if I can never use it once the battery is completely drained. I'm led to a very large hall with small tables lining the sides. There are a lot of people around, but I recognize none of them. I don't spy any soldiers, and the trio of siblings are missing as well. The servant guides me, at, uh, guides me to the small table and tells me to sit down. There are empty bowls on the table ready to be used for food. My stomach rumbles in response. I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten all day. I'm surprised I didn't faint from low blood sugar. Ooh, James is, is in his own garbs. Looks nice, looks nice. Then I spot a familiar face. James walks into the room. He's not wearing his armor up this time around, adorned instead in some more relaxed apparel. Immediately, the picture of his naked body from naked naked form pops into my mind. I try to shake it away. No, go away, you evil intrusive thoughts. Our eyes met me across the hall. His face twists into annoyance. I'm the first to break eye contact. It's so awkward looking at him. What am I even doing here? Leno is coming over. With each step he takes, my anxiety rises. Soon enough, he sits down on the empty spot next to me. Of course he has to sit here. It seems you managed to find your way over here in one piece. He draws out a bored tone. Um, and it seems you didn't get lost this time either. <laughs> I reply sarcastically. I'm not afraid to bite back. This time, he snaps back. Well, you seem to get lost a lot. First, you, for, you couldn't find my room. And then you thought the bath, w the bath was for the men, and... Silence! He cuts me off. You will sit here and not open your mouth whole for the rest of the evening. We'll see about that, I mutter under my breath. Just sit there in silence and wait for Lord Veritas to arrive. I roll my eyes at him. That, that Veritas better hurry up because I'm talking James only works up my appetite even more. I saw it gurgle loudly once more. It's so loud even James looks down at me. My eyebrows raise all the way up. Oh, sorry. Eyebrows raise and all. Okay, this is really awkward. I can't control the noises my stomach is making. Do you have a living parasite inside your body? What? No, I deny hastily. That's gross. Then what is making that dreadful noise? It tells you to stay quiet. I can't help it. I'm really hungry and I haven't eaten since I got up. Got here, I complain. Pathetic. Earthlings really are weak. You act like you're on the brink of starvation simply because you miss a day's worth of food. I'm not going to apologize for being hungry and having a different appetite from you or apply with as much dignity as I have. The meal will be served once Lord Veritas has arrived. Until then, control your stomach. I would if I could. Princess Michiko voice calls out. Oh, he's so cute! He's so cute! Oh my god, if I was put in a room and these two were my options here, I would actually go for Caleb. <laughs> Did I read that line? I look up and see Caleb walking behind me. He's also not wearing his armor. It feels less intimidating, makes him look more approachable. Which is why I would feel like I would choose him over uh, James. Hello, I greet him politely. You're looking positively radiant tonight. I presume your trip to the ham hammam went without any trouble. I didn't expect to be smooth talked like this, and should I look down at my table? My eyes shifted ja over to James, who hasn't said a word. It certainly didn't go by without trouble. It was nice, I answered instead. And just to make a point, I add, the green accents in the room really complimented the view from the night sky. <laughs> Caleb smiles at me, I'm sure they do, though I haven't witnessed such for myself. The men's hammam have red accents. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Caleb, go to your seat. You know this isn't your place. James cuts in with a curt tone. He's annoyed. If you'll excuse me, princess, he says politely before leaving. Caleb takes a seat across from us instead. I'd much rather have him as my seat buddy. I mumble under my breath. Instead, I'm stuck with this, this grumpy potato. I wonder if Billy or Lena will arrive, but I haven't seen either of them. I haven't spotted Eok either, so I'm assuming this banquet is not for... <gasps> Great, so it's just like him. And just like that, the entire room goes quiet. Room quiets down. Before it was lively, and people were walking about, chatting amongst themselves. But now it's eerily quiet. Even I tense up before I know it. He is dressed the same, so whatever, bro. <laughs> Long flowing hair enters the room with an elegant smooth stride. Veritas slowly makes his way to, to the very end of the seats. 
It passes by me, the hairs on my neck stand up straight. I'm getting flashbacks of yesterday. The brutality I witnessed with my own eyes. Seeing the blood splatter from James' back. Hearing his skin tear open. I've already experienced James killing someone in front of me, but that was quick, to the point without suffering. It was so fast I barely knew what was going on. But yesterday's vlogging was a show, a point to be made, cruelty. I'm terrified of him, more than I've been of James. When Sverida sits down at the end, the crowd starts back up again. Let the feast begin, yells out one of them. Servants start entering the room, carrying golden trays filled with carefully placed food like a gourmet dinner. They're unfamiliar shades, but it's rich in color, reds, greens, yellows. It's making me forget my terror and salivate instead. This looks a lot better than what I've been eating on the spaceship. They start serving everyone in the room. I can't wait until they get to me. Princess, contain yourself. You're ex excreting in an unsightly manner. James snaps at me. I wipe it with the corner of my mouth. But it looks so good, I say. I thought all the food was going to be textureless and boring. A smirk pulls at his lips. Careful before you stuff yourself full. Some of these these foods will may very well kill you. I rain in my enthusiasm. No matter how appetizing the food looks, it's still alien food. I don't know how I'll react to it. My stomach gro gro groans in response once my nose picks up the scent of something very delicious. Nope, screw it. I, I'm stuffing my face into that plate of food. I will take my chances. A servant places down a couple of bowls on my table. I examine each one, curious as to what their food is like. I wrinkle my nose in disgust when I see something that resembles an animal head on top of one of the plates. It's got a strange long body, looking part snake and part crocodile. It's surrounded by leafy vegetables. It's not very appetizing. I use one of the long prongs to poke it. The skin feels hard and tough. How do I eat this? I glance over at James who picks up the end of the snake-like reptile and uses his bare hands to tear off the head, pulling its entire spine with it. I spontaneously lost my appetite. In fact, I almost want to hurl. I didn't need to see that kind of deboning. James then uses the prong to stab the body and lift it up to his mouth. He effortlessly bites it off with his long canines. I look around the hall. Everyone is eating the same way. To be fair, they all have razor sharp teeth. Can I even bite into this tough skin with my human teeth? Have you forgotten how to eat? James questions when he sees I haven't touched any of it. I poke the head with the prongs. No, I say unsure of myself. Then why are you not eating? He sounds a little impatient. I don't think I can rip off the head like you did. I say honestly. What makes you so sure you haven't even tried? He asks. You either try or starve your choice. I glare at him and fidget my seat. Fine, I'll try. I lift up the reptile with my bare hands. It's lukewarm to the touch. With one hand, I grab the head. With the other, the tail. I then try to tear it apart. But the skin is so tough. It feels like I'm trying to pull apart a thick rubber band. But it's not It's not budging the least. Not wanting to admit I can't do it, I keep my mouth shut and try again, putting in all my strength. Except the tail slips out of my grasp and I end up flinging the entire body right into James' face. My bad, homie. He blocks it with his hand before it smacks him. He narrows his eyes and growls at me. Uh, I stammer as I let go of the body. That wasn't supposed to happen. He impatiently rips the head of the reptile, spine and all, then flings it back onto my plate. Just eat already, he complains. Don't toy with your food. I use the prong to scrape out the flesh and finally pop it into my mouth. Oh, I say, surprised at the taste as the flesh melts onto my tongue. Expecting it to be flavorless, I'm happy to find out it tastes a lot like regular fish. And then I throw all my manners out the window and dig in. I'm hungry and this is pra is actually pleases my palate. All these new flavors and textures are scratching the inch I have been, I've had for a long time. A month on a spaceship eating tasteless food has been more soul-sucking than I thought. Now my taste buds can experience all new, all kinds of new foods. I'm surprised they don't all taste bitter like the root I have to keep chewing on. It's mostly savory, sprinkled with earthy spices. In no time, I devour everything on my plate, finishing it off with a splash of cool water. People in the hall finally quiet down again, then we change from joyful to serious. Veritas has risen, for his, risen his hand, risen his hand in the air, a command perhaps. Captain Chain is report, he says in a quiet voice. James pounds his chest to dislodge a piece of meat before he clears his throat to speak. The journey to planet HX-108 went smoothly, taking us no longer than a little over one full noon. noon, noon, noon. As we've seen from the scans, the planet was covered in mostly water. My ears perk up. He's explaining his vision to Earth. I guess HX-108 is their name for Earth. Parts of the planet were populated, but they did not respond to any of our communications. Well, that's news to me. The Earthlings didn't seem to pose a threat, so we fired a warning missile. The immediate response was a prim primitive attack on our ship. I scoff loudly. Primitive, he calls us. I attempted to, no to negotiate, but it resulted in being hit by lightning. While the Earthlings may seem primitive with no technology, they do seem to possess strange abilities of their own. Way to go, King! You launched a direct hit on him. Wounded myself, I ordered the troops to retreat. Suddenly, everyone starts murmuring amongst themselves. They don't sound too happy. Coward, grumbles one of them. Should have stayed and fought, says another. 
With our retreat, I managed to secure our bargaining chip for the future. June starts again in a louder voice to drown out the others. He gestures to me. I took the Earthling Princess. I glanced to my left and right, feeling everyone's eyes on me. I'm the center of attention, or should I say, the conquest. People start cheering. The princess, they joust. A good prize, very good. I believe with the princess as our bargain, we can attempt to force HX-108 to surrender and seize control. My eyes don't bulge out. He wants to take Earth. Wait, not only that, he wants to return. What does that mean for me? Am I returning to Earth as well? Please let it be so. And three new noons, new, new, new noons, we return to Earth, and this time we'll claim it as our own. You will be prosperous, prosperous Lord Ver Veritas. Rain will prevail, he pronounces. Yeah, the crowd cheers. <laughs> Lord Veritas' chanting begins. He gazed down on my empty plate. I know what I heard right now was a war cry. They want to conquer Earth, but all I can think about is I might be going home after all. But he has to know you're actually not of royalty, so they're not gonna give a shit about like handing Earth over for a measly pleb human. <laughs> a day after that grand speech about seizing Earth and whatnot, I am forced to report to the infirmary. Hmm. Princess Machiko, you're looking more energized than yesterday. Billy greets me. Well, I finally had a bath and ate some food. I explained. Hmm. Did you take the tea? I made very sure to take the tea, so I won't spontaneously burst into flames. Yes. Good. <laughs> Healer! Someone tries to enter the room, scratching on top of his lungs. Belias gets up from his seat and briskly walks over to the frazzled, towards the frazzled soldier. It appears his arm is, oh, it's broken. Uh, Captain James broke my arm during training. Please fix it, he says desperately. Belias says nothing at all, but stands handing, handling the soldier with care. He quickly examines the damage, touching here and there with his hands, while all the all the while carrying a serious expression. The soldier cries out in pain when Belias presses down in a particular sore spot. Please relax, he says. Then his hand begins to glow a strange light blue, spreading into the soldier's arm. With one swift movement, Billius cracks the bone back into place and the arm looks completely normal again. The soldier blinks at it and clenches his hand into a fist a couple of times, swinging around his arm to test it out. Excellent! Healer Billius really is the greatest, he says in awe. Honestly, I am super impressed as well. Did he really fix the broken bone just like that? I wonder what his healing capabilities are. really are. I didn't see him do anything special when he was working on James' back. This time, however, he definitely used some special ability. Take it easy for today. No heavy lifting, Billy says in a serious tone. Yes, yes, says the soldier, and he happily skips out of the infirmary. Once he's left, I turn to Billy. Yes. Is it normal to have soldiers come in for broken bones, I ask? If you're wondering whether Prince James injuring soldiers is commonplace, then your intuition is correct. My eyes widen. That sounds awful. Belius's face doesn't yeah. change. Soldiers get injured all the time during training. It's not my job to question it, only to heal. Well, you seem to have a good job at that, I know. Yashia looks away surprised I complimented him. Oh my god, he's blushing. He's blushing. I'm literally falling in love with everyone but the main character we're supposed to fall in love with. It's a little fun to see a serious demeanor change into, change into something more demure. Perhaps, perhaps you can assist me on site at training ground sometimes. I definitely wouldn't mind a change of scenery, I say with a smile. For the rest of the day, Billius teaches me how to cast to how to add a cast to someone's broken arm, in case his ability isn't able to fix it. it seems even he has limits. A couple of days passed. I had someone instruct me that there were restrictions on my freedom of roaming around the palace. Can't leave the palace, can't step anywhere near Veritas' cha private chambers, which is comprised of an entire stretch of land, and I already forgot some of them. The restricted areas should be easy to spot, though. They're guarded by their entrance. As long as I'm wearing the armlet, I can go nearly anywhere else. Just as I enter the hallway, I see Lena's hair disappear at the other end. Oh, I should say hi. Lena, I call out, hoping she hears me. I start jogging up to her, but she's too quick. However, when I reach the end, there's no trace of her left. I'm confused. Where does she go? I didn't imagine it, right? I sigh loudly. Fine. I guess I'll just head back. Except something else catches my attention. The sound of birds chirping. That's the first time I've heard an animal noise in this palace, and it intrigues me so much about all the chirps. Ooh, it's a little garden area. So then I come across an open area leading into a garden. Wow, look at all the plant life. Whereas the desert I had on the outside of the palace has been barren, this garden was the complete opposite of that. It's so pretty! I love gardens. Lush red greens and various other vibrant colors from all the flowers and bushes. It feels like I've stepped into another dimension. There's a water fountain spread across the garden, supplying water to all the plants around. It's so gorgeous. I stand in front of a particularly large plant. It looks like a yellow bell. Oh, it smells super sweet. I lean in to take in the scent. 
No, get away from there. I turned to face to the face. I turned to face the voice, but I'm caught off guard. Complete. Uh, I I'm caught off guard from when suddenly the bell-shaped plant releases a vine from its open mouth and lashes my hands. What the? I shriek and jump back, protectively holding my hand against my chest. The plant jiggles around and goes back to staying stationary. Ouch! She gave me a cut across the top of my hand. It stings. I look around to see where the voice came from and suddenly see a mini veritas rapidly approaching me. Oh, who are you? Are you like a prince? Let me see, let me see, he says in a concerned tone. His glimmering eyes focus on my hand. Awkwardly, I show him my hand. Uh, it's starting to really throb by now. Wait, is it poisonous? Please hold still, he says in a gentle voice. This is going to sting a little. He deftly plucks a leaf from a nearby bush, pu pushes it into his mouth, che and chews on it a little. With a feather-like touch, he lifts up my hand to his face. He then spits out the chewed-up leaf and presses it, again presses it against my cut. I gasp when it stings even more. Sorry, he merely apologizes, but we need to extract the poison so bear with it. And just like that, I clamp my mouth shut. Don't approach strange alien plants. Caught it. I should treat everything like it's a death trap. Going to be okay, though, right? I ask with a nervous giggle. He shoots me a smile as he continues to dab the leaf onto my wound. Don't worry, it's only a few more seconds and sh that should work. No side effects either. I guess I wandered into the wrong garden. You certainly did, because no one is allowed to enter here besides me. He says this in such a cheerful voice that I have a hard time telling whether he's sarcastic or not. He removes the leaf from my wound when I pull my hand back. It doesn't sting anymore. Thank you, I say, appreciating his help. But were you serious? I shouldn't be here. He chuckles slightly, completely forbidden to. Oh, well, but I can tell you're new. Everyone knows there's not allowed to enter my garden. It's strict orders from my brother. I notice the word brother here, and his striking similarity to a certain overlord, so I mean he blurted out. There it is. Yes, he doesn't want me interacting with the staff. But I'm not staff, I start to protest. It's okay, I can keep a secret if you can. You know what? <laughs> Considering he immediately applied first aid and seems to be otherwise very nice, I'll agree to it. Alright, don't tell anyone I've been mm -hmm. here. What's your name, he asked me. You don't look like go uh, a goat or a who. My name's Michiko, I'm from the planet Earth. I'm human, I explain. Huh? A human, huh? Well then, you're the first human I've met. Finally, it feels good to hear someone call me a human after being dressed as Earthling for the umpteenth time. Then what's your name, I asked with a smile. Nornus. Prince Nornus, he says politely. Well, Prince Nornus, I say addressing him correctly. You have a very nice garden here. His eyes fill up with pride, the pupils turning into thinner slits. You think so, he asked, Excit excitement leaking to his voice. It's very pretty. I mean, a plant did just try to poison me, but that's my own mistake. Do you tend to this all by yourself? I do, yes. It's my own little world, he says in a soft tone. No one expecting me to follow him towards the water fountain. Curious, I follow I follow him. I thought I wasn't supposed to be here. <laughs> I thought I wasn't supposed to be here. What am I doing? Oh, there's a reptile-like bird bathing in the water fountain. It has a striking blue color. It flies away when we get too close. Norna steps his slender finger into the water. Rings appear from the surface until they start to glow an iridescent green. Silently, I watch as the rings appear faster and grow larger. Then he pulls out a long green stem from the water and presents it to me. It grew into a golden flower. Wow, the petals are really shiny gold. I gasp in response and Norna shyly looks down at the ground in response. You can have it, he says. Eager to accept it, I'm about to take it from him, but I stop midway. Is it poisonous? I ask. He smiles timidly. No, I do not wish to harm you. That's probably the nicest thing anyone has said to me since I arrived here. I've been miserable all this time, but the stranger who apparently doesn't even know I'm in prison or treats me with the kindness I've been missing. Eok has been kind to me too, but I haven't seen him since the day I arrived here. Even Billius hasn't been this hospital towards me, so I can't help but have my eyes water up in reason. I feel like crying. Nornis pulls the flower back his eyes wide. Oh no, are you having an allergic reaction? I quickly wipe away any forming tears with my hands. No, I'm sorry about that. I quickly apologize. It's just, I'm happy you're being so nice to me. He looks a little confused at my reaction. Perhaps he doesn't know what crying is. I don't really want to explain it though. I feel silly for tearing up. Thank you, it's very lovely and I'd love to have it. I say, stretching out my hand for to the flower. I'm about to set the flower until a strong gust of wind makes it, makes it go flying out of Nornis' grasp. You wretched pest, I hear some bellow. <sighs> Every time. Every time I'm about to have a moment with some other dude, you show up. <laughs> you show up, James. Why? <laughs> I instinctively freeze up as James lands in front of me. You're in the royal garden. He advances on me. You are trespassing. You're engaging with the royal prince. I shrink a response to him, enunciating each word with venom. You seriously not? You're going to be. 
happens, James, don't be mad. Norinus whines as he grabs James' arm. I asked her to come here. Please don't punish her. He pauses, his eyes shifting over from, from me to Nornis. It seems he doesn't quite believe what Nornis is saying, but I keep my mouth shut. I don't want to anger him any, even more. Regardless, Prince Nornis, you shouldn't engage with our guests. You know the rules, James says with a sigh. Nornis looks crestfallen, I know. There's a rule where he can't talk to people. Wait, now he's the one being scolded. I can't let him take the fall for me. Actually, I start, but Nornis quickly jumps in front to cut me off. Why don't you take her back to her room then? He asks James in this nervous voice. Very well, please take care. James definitely bows in front of Nornis. Then all the attention is back on me. You, he growls, follow me. Nornis gives me an apologetic look and I smile back at him. Guess I'm not getting the flower either. Damn. Alright, time to get yelled at and then I'm gonna have trauma. <laughs> James remains quiet. Oh, he's quiet. Alright. Alright, that's fine with me. As he takes me back to my room, I feel like he's gonna yell at this anyway. When we're in the room, perhaps he's seething inside, or perhaps he's an un unfeeling machine. Who knows what he's thinking? James takes a small round, of round device out of his belt. He looks at it while he wa while we walk. You may be able to roam the palace, but don't forget that I know where you are at all times. He warns me. And the royal garden is definitely off limits. No one told me, and defend myself. You didn't either. I finally managed to catch a glimpse of the device and see a map of the palace covered in several colored dots. James quickly puts it away when he sees I'm looking at it. I'll check with the servants to confirm whether they told you, or if you have brain damage. Brain damage? I cast astonished. Mm. Your earthly body is frail and weak. You've already gotten a new cut since the last time we spoke. James looks at the cut in my hand. I pull, pull it out of his view. That doesn't mean I have brain damage. I'm perfectly rational and my memory is fine. That's debatable. <laughs> He's so damn rude. I can't stand him. Do you think you can manage not to starve without provisions until dinner is served this time? He smirks at me. And do you think you can manage to find your way back without getting lost? Why are you worried about me? No, I'm gonna be fierce. I know why James clicks his tongue at me. You'll eat in your chambers today. You're forbidden from leaving until a servant comes in the morning. I roll my eyes at him. House arrest, fine. I step towards the door frame, but halt my movement. We haven't spoken since the banquet, but something has been on my mind, a question I've been dying to ask. Are you returning to Earth? I ask. Am I? James keeps quiet. Report to Healer Billius in the morning. A servant will wake you, he says. Ignore my question. Without another word, James flies off. I sigh out loud, left, left to wonder whether or not I'll be going home. I don't think you are, girly. I don't think you are. I don't know what our situation is with this man either. Like, literally, I'm falling in love with every other fucking side character that appears in front of us. Over the main guy that we're supposed to fall in love with. James right now is bottom tier. Top tier, Dimitri, Dimitri, Neil, um, Kane, and um, James. <laughs> you, better, you better step it up, James. Right now, you're a little bomb tier for me. Well, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.